So here I want to start with a quick review of parametrizing curves or parametric representations of different curves and equations in space because this is going to be essential information for us to keep in mind as we begin our exploration of scalar-valued line integrals and vector field line integrals. So for the following parametric representations, we're always going to be letting t be the arbitrary parameter. Now keep in mind, this is that same arbitrary parameter we already know. t is some real number. So, the first parametric representation I want to review is that of a line segment. Now, if you think way, way back to the beginning of this course, we looked at the parametric equations of a line segment. We also looked at representing a line in space using a vector-valued function. And that's the same thing that we're doing here. So let's start with the familiar vector-valued function for a line segment. And now, well, here we have a line segment from point x naught, y naught, z naught to a point x sub 1, y sub 1, z sub 1. So recall, the vector-valued function is a vector with the components x of t, y of t, z of t. So using this, we have our fixed point defined by the position vector. So let's let that be x naught. So we have the vector x naught, y naught, z naught, plus the arbitrary parameter t multiplied by the parallel vector. So we'll define this as x sub 1 minus x naught, y sub 1 minus y naught, z sub 1 minus z naught. And now this, of course, is such that t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1. So this is familiar. We know this. This is the vector-valued function representing a line segment in space. Now, in addition to this vector-valued function, recall that we also had the individual parametric equations for this line segment. So the parametric equation representation would be the three individual equations. We have our x of t, which is equal to x naught plus t times x sub 1 minus x naught. We have the y of t parametric representation, which is defined as y naught plus t times y sub 1 minus y naught. And last but not least, we have z of t is equal to z naught plus t multiplied by z sub 1 minus z naught. So these are the individual parametric equations for the line. And again, this is such that t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 1. The second parametric equation I'd like to review with you is that for smooth curves. And there's two cases we'll want to look at here. Case 1 is when we have a smooth curve defined as y equals f of x, where x is greater than or equal to a, less than or equal to b. So in this case, we're simply going to let x be the arbitrary parameter t. And so therefore, y is going to be now represented as f of t. And now, again, since x equals t, this will be such that t is greater than or equal to a, less than or equal to b. Now, the second case is when we have a smooth curve defined as x is equal to g of y. And this is where y is greater than or equal to c, less than or equal to d. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and let the variable y be equal to our arbitrary parameter t. And so therefore, x is going to be defined as the function g of t. And now again, since y is equal to that arbitrary parameter t, we have the bounds where t is greater than or equal to c, less than or equal to d. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, well, isn't a line a smooth curve? Isn't a line segment a smooth curve? And you're absolutely correct. A line is a smooth curve. So you could use either of these parametric representations, depending on the line, 
to parameterize a line or a line segment, just be careful that the bounds here will depend on the bounds of your original function. They won't necessarily be 0 and 1. Now, what if we don't have a function? What if we have an equation like a circle? So that's the next parametric equation I'd like to review with you. And again, we have two different cases I'd like to look at here. So in our first case, we have the circle centered at the origin with a radius of r. So x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And now, in terms of your parametric representations, there are two cases to consider. So the first case is going to be if we have counterclockwise revolution about this circle. So with counterclockwise revolution, we are moving around this circle in a counterclockwise direction. So in this case, we're going to go ahead and let x, or x of t, be equal to the radius r multiplied by cosine of t, and we'll let y, or y of t, be equal to the radius multiplied by sine of t. And of course, this is such that if we have a full circle, t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. Now, alternatively, we could be revolving about the circle in a clockwise direction. So if we have clockwise revolution, we are moving about the circle in this direction. So how will the parametric equations change? So here, with clockwise revolution, we're going to let x be equal to r times cosine of t. And y is going to be equal to minus r times sine of t. Now again, if we have a full circle, this is going to be such that t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. So again, these are the two different parametric representations for a circle centered at the origin with a radius of r, for both the counterclockwise revolution, or orientation, and a clockwise orientation. Now, what happens if the circle is not centered at the origin? What if it's centered at some point x0, y0? So let's make a little love note here to ourselves that the, this case, the center point is the ordered pair x0, y0. So don't let this new center point throw you off. It is the same thing that we looked at in the first case, except we're going to need to shift the coordinates, either x0 units, if we're talking about the x coordinate, or y0 units, if we're talking about the y coordinate. So for this, let's assume counterclockwise orientation or counterclockwise revolution. So it'll be the same thing for your clockwise revolution. So the parametric representation for the x coordinate is going to be x naught plus the radius times cosine of t. And the parametric equation for y is going to be y naught plus the radius times sine of t. So you can see how all we've done is we've shifted x0 or y0 units accordingly. And again, if we have full revolution about a circle, this will be such that t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. And last but not least, the final parametric equation I'd like to review with you is that of an ellipse. So let's recall that an ellipse is defined as x squared divided by a squared plus y squared divided by b squared equals 1. And now this is where a and b are real numbers, and we want these real numbers a and b not to be equal. Otherwise, we'd have a circle. So what are the parametric representations for an ellipse? Now, just like with a circle, we need to consider the orientation of the ellipse. So first case, let's assume that we have counterclockwise orientation or counterclockwise revolution about this ellipse. So the parametric representation for x is going to be a multiplied by cosine of t 
and the parametric equation for y is going to be b sine of t. And now if we have full revolution about this ellipse, this will be such that t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. Now, what about if we have clockwise orientation or clockwise revolution about this ellipse? So thinking back to the parametric equations for a circle, we have a very similar case here. The parametric equation for x in this case is going to be a cosine of t, and the parametric equation for y is going to be minus b sine of t. And again, if we have a full revolution about this ellipse, this will be such that t is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi. So there you have it. These are four of the most commonly used curves and equations that we are going to see in this in these upcoming sections, particularly with line integrals and as we proceed through the rest of vector calculus. So these parametric representations are going to be important for our success.